the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The batteries for my microphone are dead, so I'll go in and get them in a second. Let us pause at the outset, reflect upon God's goodness to us, and seek his mercy and forgiveness for the times we have sinned. Let us have the courage to say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brother. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, go buy yourself a linen loincloth, wear it on your loins, but do not put it in water. I bought the loincloth as the Lord commanded and put it on. A second time, the word of the Lord came to me thus, take the loincloth which you bought and are wearing and now go to the parath. There hide it in a cleft of the rock. Obedient to the Lord's command, I went to the parath and buried the loincloth. After a long interval, the Lord said to me, go now to the parath and fetch the loincloth, which I told you to hide there. Again, I went to the parath, sought out and took the loincloth from the place where I had hid it, but it was rotted, good for nothing. Then the message came to me from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, so also I will allow the pride of Judah to rot, the great pride of Jerusalem. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> The wicked people who refuse to obey my words, who walk in the stubbornness of their hearts and follow strange gods to serve and adore them, shall be like this loincloth, which is good for nothing. For as close as the loincloth clings to a man's loins, so had I made the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah cling to me, says the Lord, to be my people my renown, my praise, my beauty, but they did not listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You, you have, have forgotten, forgotten God, God who gave, gave you birth. birth. You were unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger toward his sons and daughters. You have, you have forgotten, forgotten the God, God who gave you birth. birth. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are, sons with no loyalty in them. You have, have forgotten, forgotten the God, God who gave, gave you birth. birth. Since they have provoked me with their no God, and angered me with their vain idols, I will provoke them with no people. With the foolish nation, I will anger them. You, you have, have forgotten, forgotten God, God who, who gave, gave you birth. birth.
Alleluia, alleluia. The Father willed to give us birth and by the word of truth that we may be a kind and that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with measure, three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parable. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables and I will announce what was lain hidden from the foundation of the world. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sadly enough, and we, I think we all know this, that familiarity breeds contempt, so to speak, or when we hear something or the same story over and over again, have you ever had one of those friends who tells the same stories over and over again? And what do we do? Sometimes we're polite enough to start listen and smile and shake our heads, but in our minds, we're wandering off. Sometimes it happens with the gospel passages. We hear certain stories over and over again, and we let our minds wander. But like anything in life, if you think about a, a, a piece of art or music, a piece of music, or if you look at you know, some of the movies we may have seen during our lives, I love going back and seeing old movies and noticing different things. You know, and it kind of sparks something different in our minds. It's the same thing with our gospel passage today. We've heard this gospel passage many times over our lives. As a matter of fact, we've heard it about three times this past summer. The, uh, the mustard seed. And we might let our minds wander. And we forget that there's always truth. There's always certain nuggets of treasure or truth within, within these parables that can pop out at us and how they can be explained. I was listening to a Monsignor James Vlon, who is a priest, talking about this parable. And he said it in such a way, kind of, it made sense that it was obvious. But the way he explained it was, when he was younger, and of course, he's Italian, and he said he used to go to a certain pizzeria and when he was younger, a younger priest, and he always loved their pizza. And he went up finally to the, and the, and the owner of the pizzeria would never give out the secret until one day the owner said, it's anchovy sauce, anchovy paste that he puts within the sauce. And from that day on, uh, Monsignor Vlon started making his own pizza with that uh, secret ingredient of anchovy sauce, the anchovy paste in the sauce. And he reminds us that it's the little things in life that spark so much beauty. God has set so many seeds, planted so many seeds in our lives. Have we nurtured those seeds? Have we done things? It's the small things in life. To kind of nurture those seeds that God has planted long ago, maybe what we need to do is to start doing little things, small acts of kindness, little things for the Lord and seeing how they grow. Today, look at your life. Where are you going? What have you done? What will you do? Maybe go out and start putting little seeds in people's minds of beautiful things, of wonderful opportunities, of kindness, and see how far it'll go for the kingdom of God. Let us stand and bring before our Heavenly Father our prayers this day. We pray for Holy Mother Church. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local representatives, may God grant them compassion to see his face 
and the most vulnerable whom they serve. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those who lack adequate health care, support and strength and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may God look graciously upon us in our most need. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed from this life, may they enjoy perfect peace and abundance of God's love with Mary and all the saints in heaven. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way today, we remember Lisa Wright, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear, hear and answer the prayers that we bring before you, for we ask them through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us as a source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise is had nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, we am our Archbishop, all the clergy and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your divine will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful to me. Sing songs to the name of the Lord Most High.
For those who cannot receive communion at this time, I offer you this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you freed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.